In this video, we're going to talk about navs, tabs, and nav bars. So navs are the basic included navigation components that come built in with Bootstrap. So a basic nav is you can you can use it as your top level navigation for your site. You can use a nav as any a navigation anywhere within the page or also within a footer element. So navs can go pretty much anywhere in your site where navigation is required. So to start out, we're gonna build a basic navigation. And the basic navigation within Bootstrap uses that built-in Flexbox styling. So, and the basic class is just .nav. So to build one, I'm gonna go into my, I'm starting with a blank canvas just to make life easier here. So I'm just gonna create an ordered, unordered list And I'm going to give this unordered list a class of nav. Now this is going to tell any browser that's looking at it that this is a navigation element. So you wouldn't use this on an unordered list if you're just trying to show some listed items. But if you're using an unordered list to create some navigation, this is when you would use that. So once I have my unordered list, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to build my basic list items. And I'm going to give this list item, so I'm going to call this one, I'm just going to call it link one. And I'm going to, this list item also needs to have a class to it, and that class is going to be nav item. So that way that the browser knows this is where a navigation is, and this is a navigation item. So then within this, nav item i'm going to go ahead and create my hyperlink just going to open this up so i can see it i'm going to wrap that around link one here There we go, so I can see that wrapping. And then my a, uh, my a tag also needs to have a class to it as well. And that class is going to be nav link. I go ahead and save that. I'm gonna take a look at this. And there's my link that doesn't look like a whole lot. It just looks like a basic link. Um, however, this is letting the browser know that this is a navigation item with a link. So now that I made one, I'm going to make, I'm just going to duplicate a couple of these so you can see how they work within a navigation item. So if you're having multiple things, which you would, so I'm going to copy this whole section, paste, and paste again. I'm going to call this link three and two. Let me save that. And there's my basic one, two, and three of my links of a basic nav element. Now I can add some classes to these. <clears throat> I can add some classes to these that would um, make it be like if you were on it, you wanted to the link one to say this is the active page or the active link that you're on. You can also disable some of these links. So the classes to do that, if I wanted to look at this nav link right here, I would say nav link and I would call this one active. And then I can disable this link here by simply typing in a space and saying disabled. I'm gonna go ahead and save that and you can see the difference. You see this one is grayed out. I can no longer click on it. This one now becomes the active link for this page. Since the nav element works with Flexbox classes, you can use some of these Flexbox classes to stylize your navigation. So one of those would be to justify um, the content horizontally. So if you'd like to center that, you just navigate up to your unordered list with the class of nav and then add the additional class of justify content center. Save that and you see that that has centered my navigation along the top here. If I wanted to make it right aligned, I would change that from justify content center to justify content end. 
and that's going to move it to the right. And this is different from, um, this is more of a uh, bootstrap 5 convention than a bootstrap 4, so be aware of what version you're working in. Um, this has made it a little bit easier for, um, looks a little bit different where you had to use an ML auto as opposed to justifying that content. You can make your content stack vertically by adjusting that, I'll remove that justify content. And I'm gonna change this to being flex column. And that now stacks vertically. You can change these from your standard links into tabs if you wanna do tabs or pills. So to do that, I'm gonna remove these, this flex column so it um, doesn't stack vertically anymore. And I'm gonna change this into nav tabs. You see that gives me a nice tab look along the top. I can change it to pills as opposed to tabs just by changing that to pills. It's not a hugely different look, but you can see that that now becomes this pill look to it as well. There are different ways that you can force your NAVS content to extend to the full available width by using a couple different modifying classes. So I'm going to go ahead and change the text of my link to be a lot longer because sometimes we have navigation elements that are much longer than another one. So I'm going to call this a much longer text link here just so that that fills out a little bit longer and then I'm going to force this to justify across the full width of the page so I'm going to navigate back up to my unordered list within this class and then I'm going to type in the class of nav fill I'm going to save that and you can see that that is going to fill the available space and justify it all the way across that width. I can also justify this instead of saying fill. And you see that's going to justify, but it scoots in just a little bit. So this makes everything the exact same width. So while doing nav fill is going to take up the full thing, nav justified is going to force this much longer text length to break. So let's change that so you can see the difference. And you see the difference where this is not going to break. This link is just going to be longer as opposed to nav justified. breaks that text. So depending on how you want to style your navigation items depend will change how you do these classes. So it depends on um, your prerogative visually for those. You can make any of your nav items have a drop down by simply adding some, um, another unordered list to become your drop down menu with list items. So we're going to go ahead and add a drop down to our much longer text link here. I'll navigate to the list item that has a class of nav item, and I'm going to add an additional class of drop down. So from that, I'm going to go ahead and create my drop down menu. So from this, I will navigate to my link where this says nav link. I'm going to go ahead and call this drop down toggle nav link drop down toggle. And then within this, I'm going to go ahead and create my unordered list. And this unordered list is going to have the class of 
drop down menu. And then in here, I'm going to create my list items. And these will, all these list items will have a class of drop down item. And then within there, I can go ahead and create my A tag. I'm going to give it an href. I'm going to wrap that around here. Oops, I put my class in the wrong item. This needs to be in with the a tag. There we go. Class of drop down item with my a tag and not with my list item. So now that I have one, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. And then I will change this to two and to three. And I've forgotten one critical piece here in order to make this work. I need to, um, and this is a little bit different from four to five, is I need to add the data bootstrap toggle. In four, it's just data toggle, data dash BS dash toggle, and that is going to equal drop down. So be aware of what version you're coding in. If it's four, it may just be data dash toggle for drop down. If it's this five beta, it's data data dash BS dash toggle. And then you can see that I have my drop down links within my navigation. So you can add any of that to the, um, the drop downs to any of different nav items, just as you would to any other links. So that is the basics of using the nav element in Bootstrap. Next, we're going to style this into the nav bars, uh, the nav bar class within Bootstrap. The Bootstrap nav bar element is a powerful, responsive navigation header. It supports branding, navigation, and more, and it also has support for um, a collapse plugin so that way you can at a mobile breakpoint move into a mobile menu. So I'm going to go ahead and create my navbar brand above this navigation element that we've just created. So I'm going to navigate up to the body above here and then I will move up here to create build or to start building my navbar. So some of the supported content for a navbar would be the navbar brand that the navbar brand allows you to state your company or website name, product or project name. So that's something that search engines will look for. Um, it can go full height. Um, so it has support for drop downs. It can collapse and have a mobile menu. You can also have vertical um, navbar text and add which adds vertically centered strings of text. And you can add a nav bar scroll, which allows you to scroll with the content. You can also do like a scroll spy plugin, which allows, so if you have a one page site or if you have multiple links within um, that you want it to scroll down and fire off to, you can use that scroll spy as well. So let's start by building our basic nav bar. So the first thing, first tag you're gonna need to create is your nav tag. So within this nav tag, I'm going to begin to build this nav bar. So I'm going to give this a class of nav bar. And within my nav bar, I'm going to create a new div tag. And I'm going to give this a class of container fluid. I'm going to open that up, and 
then I'm going to give, I'm going to create a new A tag and I'm going to start building my nav bar brand. So I'm going to give it a class of nav bar brand. I'm going to give that a link, hyperlink. I'm going to call this nav bar. I'm going to go ahead and start building in some of the links that go within here as well. So I'm going to create a new div and I'm going to give that a class of This is going to have a class of collapse navbar collapse so this is going to, the, these classes are going to allow your nav bar to collapse at the smaller size and the smaller breakpoints and go into a mobile menu. And then I'm going to bring in my unordered list. And I'm going to give this a class of nav bar nav. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to create my list items. And these are going to look a lot like your items that you had created for your nav elements. So I'm going to create a list item here. I'm going to give it a class of nav item. And then within that list item, I'm going to open that up here and create my anchor tag or create my tag. And I'm going to give this a class of nav item. And then I'll call this link one. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate some of those. Just reduce the space. So I've got my list item. There we go. I'm going to duplicate a few of these just to bring in my So I have more things to see. Link one, link two, and link three. So I'm gonna add some additional classes to um, the nav class. So I want to add the class of navbar expand large. So this says at a large breakpoint, this is gonna expand and take up the full width. I'm going to say nav bar light, which is going to give it a light colored background. So nav bar light means that the text is going to appear on a light background. And then we're going to say background light, BG light, which will give it a light background. So when I save that, that's going to pop up a little bit here. So then at the large size, it's there we go. Now it shows where I have uh, link one, link two and link three. So that is expanded. So now that those are visible to give us some visible classes, I'm going to keep styling this nav bar. You'll see that there is a lot of work that goes into styling a basic nav bar. Um, so don't think that you can create these very quickly. They do take quite a bit of work to get them to look correct. So since we've already said that this needs to collapse and it's going to be a collapsible nav bar, let's go ahead and bring in our button class, which is our the um, that mobile hamburger menu. So let, we are going to need to build a button for it. So I'm going to create a button tag. And this button will have a class of navbar toggler. We're going to say the type is button. And then we need to add the data bootstrap toggle is collapse. And then you're going to create an ID for your target. So that way you're targeting a button. So this can be anything you just need to remember what it is. So data bootstrap target, because you need to target the menu that you are creating. Hash 
hashtag for your ID. And then I'm just going to call this navbar target. And you can name that anything that you would like to. I'm going to end that button there. And then I need to bring in the um, icon that makes that mobile menu. So I'm going to create a span class. And that is going that span is going to have a class of and this one is tricky. So it is navbar toggler icon. So be aware that that doesn't say toggle, it says toggler icon. And then I'll end that span class and that will bring in that button for the mobile menu. So now that we have this, we've created this div here for collapse, navbar collapse. This is where we are going to put place that ID that we wrote up here in the button. So these two things need to agree. The target is this ID of navbar target. So I need to assign that ID to this div. So within this collapse, navbar collapse, I'm gonna keep working within that. It's not a class, it is an ID element. And that is going to, because that needs to agree, it is case sensitive, so make sure they agree. So this is going to say navbar target because I wrote mine with the camel case. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And let's test it out and see if, there we go, that mobile menu is working and there are my links. So that is the button that we have created. Here is my navbar brand and here are my links. So I'm noticing that there's a little bit of a problem here with these links. They're not appearing the way they should have. Um, and I need to go back into my code because I have a little bit of a problem here. So maybe you noticed it as I was writing this. This actually isn't scripted at all. This is me just sitting down and writing code. So I accidentally wrote nav item twice. This is incorrect. So within the A tag, it should actually say nav link. And watch the difference of what happens when I change this to nav link, because this is the link, this is an item. Sometimes errors happen in code, and there you go. Now this is looking much more correct. So link one, link two, link three in my nav bar. So now I can see that, and then at my mobile size, that is the dropdown. That looks correct for your basic nav bar. So let's look real, back real quick at this and just kind of check out what we've done. So we created a nav tag. It has a class of nav bar. It expands, so nav bar expand large. So at the large breakpoint, it will expand. You can change that if you want it to expand at a different size. If I wanted to say expand at a medium size, so at the if I have maybe a short nav bar at the medium size, it will then expand. Um, so test and see what works best for you. Nav bar light and background light. So you can change those to different things. So if you said, I want the background to be dark, you can change that to background dark and that will give me that black. But since my text is black, I also need to change the nav bar to nav bar dark. And you can see that gives me a dark nav bar. So remembering your contextual colors, you can change that to those things here. I created a container and you can change that from to a fixed width or a fluid width. It doesn't matter. It depends on how you want it to look. So right now it is a fixed width container. So you can see that at this size, it's got a little bit more padding to it. If I say container fluid, it will scooch them out to the edges. So now it has the rules that apply to a fluid container. Within this container, I have created my nav bar brand, which is this word that says nav bar. So you can make this anything. So if you wanted to make it your site name, That is your site name. And then I created my button, which is that hamburger menu button. So it has a class of navbar toggler. It is a type of a button. Data bootstrap toggle is collapse because this is a collapsible button. And then data bootstrap target is to whatever ID you want to set. This is changeable with whatever it is. Just make sure you use the pound sign, hashtag, whatever you want to call it. Um, because that is going to link to your ID. That basically says I'm targeting this ID. Then we created a span class that has this toggler icon. So that's where you get that little bootstrap icon. Then we actually created what would be our menu. So 
This div has a collapse nav bar collapse. It says this is an, a collapsible nav bar. That's where you set your ID that the button can target. Unordered list with a class of nav bar nav. And then inside that unordered list is all your list items. They have a class of nav item. Your links, which has a class of nav link, and then whatever your link names are. So those are all the, the moving components to a nav bar. And there's a lot of ways that you can style them, but you, um, to have your basic nav bar, you need all of those components. So thank you for watching this video on navs and nav bars, and I'll see you on the next one.